Okay, this is the second to last video, so this is going to be technical and all that fun stuff, but once we're done, the next one is going to have some technical stuff in it too, and then we'll have the payoff, so yay for that. So this may look a little strange, but before we even expose our uh, print, we are going to mix up the bleach and the... Um, toning layer so tannic acid and washing soda washing soda or uh, sodium carbonate um, I wanted to go over one thing at a time so just with the bleaching for ferric citrate which is classic uh, cyanotypes you want to bleach with washing soda or sodium carbonate not ammonia so you'll see things that say use ammonia to bleach don't do that you want to use sodium carbonate for citrate based formulas and you want to use ammonia for oxalate based formulas only and it's because it because of what it does to the bleach layer it, it leaves it dull so and I'll go into that a little further but so for the first step is we're going to mix up the bleach so the reason we're the reason we're mixing this up uh, these two up ahead of time is when you mix this up there'll be some fine particles like a powdery substance you can see residue in my pan here that need to fall out of it so that it doesn't mess up the print so we're going to mix it up first now if you're wondering why i'm mixing this stuff up one thing i did learn from the books i've read is we're going to expose develop bleach and tone all in the same step you don't have to let it dry and wait in between all those steps which is helpful so we're going to go ahead and get our bleach mixed up so we're going to use one rounded tablespoon of the uh, sodium carbonate roughly uh, um, so about that much we're going to put this in some hot water your first batch of water is, needs to be hot to dissolve it so you just dump that in there and dissolve it um, all together you're going to be using six liters or one and a half gallons of water for the bleach bath i mean you could you could make less but i want a large amount in there i want this to be full because i don't want it dragging or touching the bottom and getting powder residue on it which will, it will mess it up so we want to make sure there's a big full batch of bleach i'm using hot water to dissolve this in but you do not want this to be hot you don't want it to bleach too fast or it'll make the plant the print flat and ugly so you want you don't want it to bleach really super fast so we're going to let this dissolve in here and you have to watch out because you'll get clumpy bits in here that you need to dissolve really good so we're going to let that dissolve a minute and then we'll pour it in here and mix two more or more of these in there okay so it's good and dissolved we're just going to pour it in the pan If there's any specks in here, don't let them get in there. You don't want undissolved bits getting into your bleach bath. So I'm going to go, we're going to mix two more of these filled with cold water into that. So here's the first one in of cold water. All right, and I'm going to go get a second one. Okay, here's the second one. And now that that's in there, you'll see it's kind of cloudy. I suggest gently stirring it up, making sure it's all mixed together. And this is just rough. I mean, you can try more or less. Like I said, you just don't want it to bleach instantly, but the temperature affects it more than anything, but we're gonna test the pH strip real quick. It's like a 12, 11 or 12, so it's plenty alkaline. And we're gonna let that sit. It's like I said, that milkiness you see is a, it's a powder 
that's still in, in the solution. So it will kind of settle down into the bottom of the pan, which is fine. We just don't want it to get all over our print. Now our next step is going to be mixing the tannic acid or the toning solution, but I just wanted to show you the flow here. This pan we're developing in plain water. We're bleaching, got a rinse in between all this, then we're toning in that big pan there. It doesn't have to be that big, but that's just all I have available to do this. So we're going to go to mixing the tannic acid solution. Uh, I suspect if you don't have tannic acid, you could use green tea, not black tea but green tea, but I have not tried that yet, so I can't swear to it. Now over at the sink, I've mixed another little cylinder here with, uh, it could be anything, but um, this is full of hot water. Um, tannic acid is not, it does not dissolve well, um, or easily, I should say. So this is my tannic acid. I recommend doing this in the sink so you can rinse it out because this stuff stains pretty bad. But we're just gonna put like a big heaping spoon, maybe not that heaping, but a decent heap of this stuff in here. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more just in case. Um, it's going to take it a minute to dissolve in. I recommend using disposable spoon. You don't have to. You might use a spoon dedicated for this. But um, just if you do use a spoon over and over, I recommend one dedicated for this. So this is going to take a minute to dissolve. So I want to put it on a stirrer, and I'll show you that just to speed this process up for this video. Okay, this is just to speed this up, and I'm not even using the heat function. I'm just dropping this on here, throwing in a stir bar. Because this stuff clumps up really bad and it's hard to, you just want to, you want to make sure it's good and dissolved or it'll mess up your final print. Um, like I said, you might be able to use green tea, just make a strong tea with it. I haven't tried that yet, but it's something you might want to try. So I'm going to let that stir and dissolve really well, and then we'll go put it in our pan and add some water to it. Okay, so this has been stirring for quite a while. Like I told you, this stuff dissolves very slowly, and it kind of gets sticky when it's wet. So I'm going to pour this in here. Um, you don't have to make near as much as I'm making. I am making large batches so I can submerge the prints. I don't want them to float. I want them submerged. The The bleach bath, it can float, but the the toning bath I want it submerged. And the reason I'm mixing all this up ahead of time is it seems like it all does better if it sits. It's like it has to, I don't know, bubbles will form and all this stuff and then after it sits a while everything seems to be okay. So now that I've got this in here I'm going to turn on my hose and add water till I get it fairly full. Alright, so I got my hose running. I'm going to let this fill up to that line or a little higher and then we're going to stir it up and let it sit. But I just wanted to show you, it's this, so I'm not going to say there's exact amounts for this. It's going to look kind of like a weak tea, a weak to strong tea when it's done. But um, I'm going to let this fill up and then we'll mix it up. Alright, now that I've got it now that I've got it fairly full, I'm just going to stir it up. And always be sure to use dedicated stuff for this. So keep this pan for toning and this spoon for toning and that little beaker for mixing up toner. And the same thing with the bleach. Don't, don't cross them or don't mix them up because you could mess up the print because there could be some alkalinity left in it or some tannic acid or something and it'll just ruin the whole process so don't or always use dedicated stuff so okay so this is mixed up you can see it kind of looks like a well low to medium brew tea so it's going to sit there 
Gonna let that sit there because we want all this to mix up, sit, and we want it to cool down from the warm water we used to mix it. And in the next step, we're gonna work on actually exposing our print. Okay, we're gonna get on with the exposing part, but I'm gonna go over a couple things. So I'm just using this big 80 watt UV floodlight. So it's 80, it's 80 watts. Uh, it says it's 410 nanometer, which by the way is not the best for cyanotypes. Um, and one of the ways I'm, I'm doing this, so I'm using this little frame and setting this on top of it so that so that we can get uh, close to the print. I wouldn't try to do anything with this larger than 8x10. We're doing an 8x10. You could do smaller. Don't try anything bigger. It's just not powerful enough for that. Um, just so you know, the distance between the negative and the light is five and a half inches. I'm just telling you all this. That way, if you wanted to try to replicate it, you can. I had to extend this out because it wasn't catching all of the negative. So this is just to hold the light up, plus it pushes down on the glass, which helps keep the negative as close to the paper as possible, which is important. So this is the exposure setup. It's just this light in this little stand. Um, I use this brush to make sure glass and negatives and everything else doesn't have any dust particles on it before exposing. Um, you won't have to have one for this, but I'm just using it. I built this little timer unit just to make it easier for me, but you don't need anything like that. Um, so I want to show you the setup and we're going to make the first layer. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is our piece of paper. And then you want to make sure that you have the right negative. So this is the one we printed. This, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the yellow plus cyan. You need to make sure it's down the proper way. If you look, the side that goes down is the very dark side. If you flip it around, it's kind of milky. So this dark side, the printed side, is what you want down. So you're going to put it on the paper. Make sure it's covering everything. You especially want the registration marks because that's going to print. That's going to be how we register the next one. Um, next, like I said, I use this. Make sure your glass is clean just so there's no dust on it. Um, and put your glass down on it. Now that would seem like enough pressure, but I don't know why. I'm going to move it over here because it works better over here. But that little box seems to work really good at um, pushing it down on the negative better. It's a problem I've had in other prints. In fact, I'm trying to make a vacuum uh, exposure unit just to hold the negative down better. So, I know that it should be 65 minutes for this because of my test. If I do everything exactly, hopefully it will be the same. But if you're experimenting, you don't have the same light bulb, it's not the same distance, it's a different type of printer, negative, whatever, you're going to have to do some tests to see what your exposure is. So you're going to take a piece of black paper and expose it, I'd say depending on how powerful your light is, 5 or 10 minutes, and move it 5 or 10 minutes, move it 5 or 10 minutes, and just keep doing that all the way down. Um then you want to process it fully like you would. You're going to bleach it, you're going to tone it, everything, because that's the only way you're going to know if it's correct. Once you do that, then you can figure out what you need to do for the next layer. In fact, that's what I made the, if you saw, I made two, um, two pieces of paper I didn't, we didn't uh, shrink. That's what those are for. You do those so you can do an exposure test without using the paper you spend all the time shrinking. So we're just going to go through this one and do it because I'm hopefully not naively confident this will work. Um, so on this, the way it's designed, put it down. And this will hopefully push down and make that work a little better. We're going to put the exposure unit on it. 
And since the last one I did was 65 minutes and it worked, we're going to hopefully do 65 minutes. So that's what we're going to test here. So I'm going to set this to 65. Again, you don't have to have one of these. I just happened to build one for this project. So it's set at 65. And then it's going to turn on. And then we'll come back and try to process this here in 65 minutes. Okay, it's been 65 minutes. Take off our glass. Take off the negative. And there's the print. So now we're going to go develop this. All right, we're over at the sink, and we're going to develop this at the sink because I want to rinse it off over here. Um, now here's, this is going to be a little bit of a long rant to explain this. Um, you can control contrast when you're developing, developing a print by how cold or hot the water is or how acidic it is. So I want, based off my negatives and all of that, I want this to have a higher contrast. Um, you might be thinking, well, this process is high contrast anyway. Well, because the negatives, blah, 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 it won't be. So, cold water equals high contrast. The warmer the water is, the lower the contrast. The more acidic the bath of water you're developing in, the less contrast there is. It'll print faster, so whenever you're using acids or warmer water to develop, it takes less time to print, but you need to be aware of that. Um, the When you're developing a print, if you're going to develop it in, say, undilute vinegar or uh, citric acid, the basic thing to keep in mind is acidity or alkalinity is going to affect your print. So here's one that was developed in really high concentration of acid. You see how that's got some really nice bright blues. It's it's pretty. Here's the same picture, not the same size, but it was more alkaline. And you notice it's not bad, but it's more of a jean material. You know what I mean? So there's a difference. Acid, not necessarily alkaline, but our, my water is alkaline. It's, it's not acidic at all. Um, it has a lot of dissolved solids in it. So here's a difference in color. Acid, plain water, which is slightly alkaline. That is going to affect anything you do. So acid looks really good for a print like this for this layer, the cyan layer, but if you're doing a yellow layer for a tricolor, acid makes it dull and ugly, and it's not that bright yellow lemony color. To get the lemony color, it needs to be alkaline. Same way with your tannic acid layer, if you're, when you're toning. If you put it in acid, it goes dull and kind of black. In fact, I made a whole video on how to make it look black that way. But if you put it in an alkaline solution, it turns more red, which is what we want. So it's kind of a battle between the two. The bottom line for this is acidity will help the cyan layer, but it'll hurt the other layer and vice versa. So it's a balancing act. You got to get everything just right. So with all that out of the way, we're going to develop this. We're just using plain cold tap water. Now I'm just going to use a few different water changes. Um, that's all I'm going to do for this layer. We're going to rinse it, dump the water out, put some more in, and just keep doing that until it's as clear as we can get it. And then after that, we're going straight in the bleaching bath. We're not waiting, because you can wait and this will oxidize and look darker blue, etc., etc. We're not doing any of that. We're just rinsing it to get rid of the 
unexposed chemicals. You'll, you'll see. That's another way you can tell. If you look how yellow the water is, you keep changing it out until it looks clear. Plus, you'll know, you'll see it on the print. You'll notice that that yellowness goes away and it'll look white. Uh, if it's not coming out really well at this point, you can use warmer water to help pull that out. Um, but you just want to keep, you know, agitate a little bit. You don't have to constantly agitate it. Just to clear out, I want to use a little bit of warm water just to speed up the process. Um, and like I said, you, you can see on the paper, but you can tell if you tip it all into the water and notice that the water is kind of yellow, that's a dead giveaway. You haven't cleared it enough. So I'm going to let it sit in this water a minute. Oh, almost dropped it. <laughs> I'm going to let it sit in this water a minute to try to get some more of that out, and then I'll rinse it again. Rinsing on all of these steps is like the key thing. Um, in this step, the more leftover emulsion there is, the more it's going to stain. Uh, when you're toning it, after you're done toning it, you want to let it soak in water to get as much of the tannic acid solution out so it doesn't stain. So rinsing is a big deal. All right. I'm not seeing any yellow anymore, so... We're going to pull this out and we're going to put it in the bleach bath. Okay, just to show you, when we put this in the bleach, if you let this sit out or put peroxide on it, it would turn a darker blue. I'm not worried about that. But just so you have a look, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in the bleach bath this way. And we don't, again, we don't want this to bleach too fast. We want this to bleach um, slowly. If you look, it's already looking like a, it's, it's almost a purplish color. So we want this to bleach completely. What we're going to do is gently, gently float it on top like this, and we're going to leave it. It's going to take maybe 20, 30 minutes. We're going to leave it like that until it's completely be bleached. And when it's completely bleached, it's the yellow. And I mean completely yellow. There's no blue at all or purple. So we're going to leave that and let it bleach. Okay, it's been it's about 25 minutes, so we'll check on it and see. Yep, that looks good. So that's what it should look like. It should look completely yellow kind of a, not exactly lemon, kind of a little duller than a lemon, but not exactly, uh, just yellow like this. Um, you'll notice the more you use this bleaching water that it, it'll actually go clear and like all these particles will settle to the bottom. You don't want to scrape the bottom or get those particles on this or it could mess it up. So also it seems the longer you use this, the colder it gets. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so, the slower you bleach it, the better, but this should work for what we're doing. Um, so now we're going to rinse it over in the sink. You want to rinse it really good before we put it in the toning bath. With all of these steps, you want to make sure you rinse them really well. Now, the first thing I do is rinse this off, and I'm doing this with cold water. Rinse off the image with a stream of water because the majority of either the toning bath or the bleaching bath is just sitting on the surface so this will help get it off before you put it in your soaking water now I'm just going to put it in I just use these big uh, totes as my rinse rinsing baths so you're just going to put it in there and let it sit for a little bit, kind of agitate it around just to make sure all of your bleaching agent is rinsed out of it. So we're going to let that sit for a little bit, make sure it's all rinsed out, and then we'll go on to the actual toning part. 
Okay, so this is rinsed long enough, um, and we're going to take it out of the rinse water, let it drip, and then we're going straight to the toning bath. Like I said, this is one thing I did learn from the books. You don't have to let this stuff sit and dry overnight before the next step. So we're going to take it over to the toning bath. Okay, so here's our toning bath. If you notice, there's little bubbles and stuff on the surface, and if you read anything, it'll say, oh, you need to be careful because those bubbles will mess it up, and that's very true. I've got a different method of dealing with that. Um, I will say that this solution, we should be able to put it in here for anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes, and what I mean by that is the first one will probably, the first several you do will probably be 10 to 15 minutes and then the by the as it's being depleted you'll have to put it in put them in longer and longer so like 25 once you get to that point you probably need to make more toning bath so we're going to put the print in here kind of make sure we rinse so this is just going to flush off all the plain water that was on it um, most places show you to put it like this and this is what i used to do Problem is there's bubbles under here you can't see and they'll mess it up. So what I'm gonna do is, see it's already starting to change color. You're gonna use a couple bottles. These are, these are just, I just filled them with water. So you're gonna put one over here and you're gonna put one over here. And the idea is, I'm trying to keep my fingers off of it. You're gonna sink this to the bottom and hold it down. And that's going to keep all the bubbles off. That's going to make it tone more evenly. Okay, so you want to sink it to the bottom, or at least that's my technique for this. So we're going to let it sit there for 10, 15 minutes or so, and then we'll come back to it and see what we got. Okay, so it's been about 12 minutes, and as you can see, it should be done. I'm going to take these off, let it float up to the surface. As you can see, it's fully toned. I'll pull it out and let it drain off. Let it all, as much as you can, drain off. And then, um, then we're gonna go over and rinse it off in the sink. Once again, we're going to rinse this. You can use cold or warm water, it doesn't matter. You're gonna rinse one side and then the other side. You're just trying to get the majority of the toning solution off to start out with. And put it in the water. Now, this is critical. Um, there is an interaction in the next step, on the next layer, the uh, when you put uh, the cyanotype chemical on, cyanotype solution reacts strongly to tannic acid or tannins, polyphenols, whatever, um, and it turns blue or green. So we need to get as much of that out of here as possible. I have another technique I'm going to show you here in a second, but the first thing you do is always to rinse it as much as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit in this water. We're gonna rinse it off and do that a couple more times. And then there's one more step we'll do before we hang it up to dry. Okay, this has been soaking for about 20 minutes and I've been agitating it and flipping it and running some water on it. We're trying to get as much of the toning solution out as possible. Um, and you may look at this and say, well, that's, that's pretty good. I don't see any staining there. Well, you'll know, I mean, you'll see a little bit here, wherever the emulsion, see how that kind of goes out further than the actual print. That's where the emulsion was, so that's stained. Um, it's not bad though, but as soon as we do this next step, you might, you will, you're going to see it uh, definitely more clear. So here's the next step that helps tremendously with the final process. Okay, so we're back to the bleach water, and we're just going to put this in here very carefully, very slowly, just to wet it. 
and we're going to let it sit on there. And you're going to notice, maybe not as strongly at first, but you'll, the staining will appear more intense as it sits here. So we're going to let this sit here for just a few minutes, and then we're going to rinse it and uh, wash it, rinse it all over again. So it's been in the bleaching solution for just a few minutes now, and it may be hard to see on camera, but it, it looks way more stained than it did on both sides. And you might be asking, well, why in the world would you do that? Well, this is going to show up eventually anyway. This is speeding that process up. But that's not why we're doing this. What we're doing this for is, like I mentioned earlier, when you put the second layer on, it's going to react with this toned layer. Uh, no matter what you do, it's going to react with it. For some reason, putting it in this bleach water, the alkaline solution, somehow seems to help mitigate it. It doesn't stop it, but it helps to mitigate it. So that is why I do this. You could go without doing it, but I, I do this because it, um, it seems to help. I don't know why, but it seems to. So you don't have to do this step, but if you want to, you can. Um, and now we're going to go over and rinse it real good and then hang it up to dry. So same as before, this time I'm using hot water, I'm just trying to, it can be hot or cold, it doesn't matter. We're just trying to get this solution off the paper, both sides, get it washed off. And then once again, kind of face down, I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. Face up, face down in the rinse water over here. We're going to let it sit there for a while. Make sure it's good and rinsed because after it's completely dry, that's when the second layer is going to go on. Okay, so it's been soaking for quite a while. Rinse it off. I'm going to let it drip here for a second. And then we're going to hang it up to dry. So, same as before, hang it from the corner. The metal, metal clip if you have them. It'll help shed the water down and drip. Be sure you're using a fan, low, just enough to agitate, dehumidifier if you have one. But uh, that's it for this video. We're going to let this dry. I'm going to let this dry overnight, not because you need to let it dry overnight, but it's almost midnight here. <laughs> so I'm going to let it dry overnight, and then tomorrow we will do the last video, and that's where you get the payoff, and you don't get the payoff till basically the last second, but that's, the next video will be the last one for the whole process, so I'll see you in the next video.